you all are, are always, and strike me still, as sort of DIY people. You kind of take care of yourselves, you think about your business, your music, yourselves. Uh, but the whole concept of labels and the whole concept of distribution and, and everything is kind of blown up and been rebuilt. How has that impacted your lives as musicians at all? I'm, I'm never sure how to answer that question. I mean, it's... It's getting we, off to a good story. Yeah. Huh? I mean, yeah. we, are, we are so self-contained that I, I don't feel... There's been times I've argued that we're not even in the music business. That we Explain. Just, well, we, we just... We have the advantage and uh, the opportunity to, to play for each other. And um, luckily, there's an audience out there, a sufficient audience. But, but we're, we're not, we don't spend a lot of time strategizing over MP3s versus download versus vinyl. We just kind of, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the pleasures of being associated with Matador Records, who we've been with for over 20 years. And yeah. we, we like them as friends. We respect them as, as listeners. And, um, we get to make music and write songs, and they get to think about the music business. Georgia, I'm interested in hearing Iris say that <laughs> you play for each other. We thought it was about us. <laughs> I'm slightly upset about this, that you know, you're not doing this, this for us. You're this doing is where this. the argument comes in. Is that what it is? Okay, so disagree, go yeah. ahead. That's crazy, That's, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> do, do, you, do you think of it as more of a personal thing, and it just happens to be that we're witnessing it or overhearing it? I think it, the, you know, the success, such as it is, that this band has had, however you you um, describe that, yeah. I think is is we do basically follow what we want to do and follow yep. the kind of you know in, instinctively what we want to play musically. Right. And um, when people respond, it's it's great. But we still kind of basically do what we want and what what, what we respond to as yep. you know not just the two of us but the three of us and. Right. Um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure we've alienated some people along the way, but but I think we've appealed to people too. So. Has there been pressure on you, and I'll ask this to you, George, or you, Ira, to change what you did, uh, or what you were doing at the time, or what you're doing now, to somehow be more commercial? You know, that's always the word that gets thrown around. Well, why won't you do things that appeal to a larger audience? And I wouldn't say that so much, but 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 going back as far as as 1990, we we made a record in 1989 called President Yolotango, and it was the first record which had an extended noisy guitar thing, and, yep. and, it, and it got more attention than anything we'd done before. And uh, six months later, we had no bass player again, which was kind of a running theme of our early years until we met James. So we made, we decided to make a, a f folky covers record. Right. And um, the guy who, we, who owned Maxwell's and worked very closely with us thought we were crazy. He said, you know, people finally know you a little bit, know what to expect from the band, and you're right. doing something here. completely different. Right. And we weren't doing it to be different. We weren't like, oh, we'll we'll mess with them now. It was just it seemed like, well, we've there's only the two of us. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Right. And it turned out to be our record, Fake Book, which was far and away got us the most attention we'd gotten at that moment. Yeah. And I think it it helped cement the notion that just listen to whatever feels right 